So you've mentioned that there are four key areas in our quality system, design, suppliers, manufacturing and customer service. So I guess manufacturing has to come next? Yes, yeah, so we're at the manufacturing plant and this is Colin Finley. Colin is our plant leader here. Hi Zeta, welcome to our operation. Hi Colin. So what does quality mean for you in manufacturing? Well Zeta, next to safety, quality is our top priority. That means we have to have robust processes that minimise the opportunity to create defects. Um, that's called error proofing. Um, it means we have a culture where our team feel empowered to raise issues and we resolve those issues quickly using uh, strong problem solving techniques such as 5Y. It means uh, continuous improvement, it means measuring ourselves and ensuring we get better every single day. Sounds good. So where do we start? Let's go to the brains of the operation, the PGA cell. So Zena, this is the PGA lab. What's a PGA, Darren? So it's a photoacoustic gas analyzer. This is Mark. Mark's the manufacturing engineer for the PGA lab. Welcome to the PGA lab. This is where the magic happens. This place looks like a chemical lab or something. We have very many sensitive small components which are prone to dust, hence the clothing. Right, that makes a lot of sense now. Um, so what do you make here? We make photoacoustic gas analyzers for high voltage power transformers. Mm -hmm. The PGAs that we manufacture will be assembled into various products such as the DJ900, Tab Trans, Transport 10 Squared, Mini Trans. Yeah. Are you familiar with photoacoustic spectroscopy? Uh, rings the bell, not really. Okay, at the top of the PGA uh, we have a IR energy source inside a parabolic mirror. It's highly reflective and it shines down through into this filter wheel which is a wavelength selector for each of the gases being analysed past a chopper wheel which in essence strobes the light down through into the measurement cell where the gas that's being measured will absorb and release the pressure energy as pressure pulses which will be picked up uh, as signal by the microphones. The signal is proportional to the gas concentration. Wow, this is some really exciting stuff. How do you make sure it's manufactured correctly? Our manufacturing processes focus on error proofing and feedback control. We categorize control into four levels. L1 is poke yoke or mistake proofing. Mm -hmm. L2 is feedback for the operator, whether there is an issue or a defect. An example of that that we use is a leak test and also the torque tools so that we have a standard repeatable torque uh, applied to the assembly. L3 is a written document of work instruction and L4 is it's undocumented. We strive to ensure that all the control levels are L1 and we're constantly working on this. Right, okay. Um, is there any other ways you ensure quality here? Yes, cleanliness is, is key for us. Mm -hmm. We also perform a 100% visual inspection on the gold cell because that's a CTQ. What's a CTQ? CTQ, critical to quality. The reflectivity of the gold cell is critical to the measurement accuracy and stability. So before, prior to assembly, the operator will inspect the gold cell in a microscope and reject any which do not uh, pass the acceptance criteria. Okay, cool, thank you. Thanks, Mark. Okay, Zainab, so we're now going to head to the mixed model main assembly line. Cool. Zainab, we've seen the PGA assembly. Now, the PGA is a sub-assembly. It's effectively okay. then assembled into the main product. And the main product assembly line is called our mixed model assembly line. Ryan is our manufacturing engineer for the mixed model assembly line. Hi, and welcome to the mixed model line. So on this line, we actually uh, produce all our main multi-gas products. So that includes Transfix, TapTrans, DJ500 and DJ900. So our processes are flexible enough to accommodate all of these products on this line, and that's why we call it mixed model line. With all these products that you manufacture here, how do you ensure the quality? So, as you've seen in other areas, we focus on minimizing errors through four stages of error proofing. Together with clear instructions, calibrated torque tools which give feedback to the operator on when the correct torque is reached, leak testers which ensure the integrity of the gas circuit and also our trained operators. A lean ethos is also a key part of our quality procedures. By minimizing waste we improve the flow of the product and reduce the opportunity for defects. We also start every day by looking at how we have performed the previous day, how we can improve and what we need to do differently. 
We improve every day and have new ideas by working closely with the other functions within the business. Sounds good. So I have another question. I was with the design team earlier and they were talking about quality in design. Um, how is manufacturing involved in new designs? Uh, good question. Uh, well, for example, take uh, our latest product, DGA 900. So quality was built in and that was through our industrialization team. That early cross-functional involvement meant that we could get design for manufacturer changes uh, fed back to the development team. We also picked up on issues during the prototype build. In this way, it meant that we were able to prevent those problems reaching the production line yeah. and then ensure that our products continue to evolve as uh, we release them. All right, thank you. Okay, thank you, Ryan. So let's move on to test. So Zainab, we're now heading towards the final test area. Sounds good, let's go. So in this test, our products are connected to these oil lines, which actually simulate them being connected to an actual transformer. Oh wow, sounds good. And the, and the oil lines, they're injected with the, the gases that our products will tend to measure on the actual transformer as well. So our, our test technicians are constantly monitoring for both for a measurement performance and from a functional performance perspective. The test will tend to run for a minimum of 72 hours and only when it passes that test can we ship our product to our customers. Okay, sounds good, amazing stuff. Yeah, good. Okay, move on to the next cell. Hi there, hi Zainab. So, could you tell us a little bit about Hydran and how it differs from the Kelman product? Yes, the Hydran differs from the Kelman product in that it only does single gas analysis, namely hydrogen gas within the transformer. Using fuel cell technology and innovative firmware, it allows our customers to have accurate PPM measurements of hydrogen within the transformer and also allows them to have PPM limit alarms and rate of change alarms. Um, the M2 sensor is tested at various stages throughout the manufacturing process in line with our GE quality ethos. Receive no defect, create no defect and ship no defect. Right, okay. So what would happen if um, a defect was found in one of these tests? We have highly trained operators that are very experienced with our products, so they will follow our defect procedure. They will alert myself, the team lead, or at their daily Flash 5 meeting of the defect and then follow our non-conforming protocol measures, which involve tagging that component and removing it to the non-conforming area. So this lab, what's the point of this in terms of manufacturing a hydrant? So one of the critical components of the Hydran sensor is the acidic gel mm. and it needs to be manufactured within tight environmental controls, namely humidity and temperature. And this lab allows for both. Right, makes sense. Thank you so much. No problem. So I've heard a lot today about continuous improvement. What can you tell me about building that culture? So continuous improvement is really about making small improvements every day. It's about a desire to improve and it's about not accepting the status quo. At M&D, we're building a culture of collaboration and teamwork and a, a drive to solve problems. Right, so where do you start? So it really starts with a team. So you really need a diverse team, different skills and perspectives. We call that the cross-functional team. And at M&D, we're very lucky actually that we have most of the functions in the business represented on our site. And we're able to also bring in um, different members from the global team into the teams as, as well. So we're able to bring that energy in to solving problems. It's amazing what different creativity and innovation you can get from a, when a team comes together and really works. So you have your team, but now what? So now you need problems. So there's always <laughs> lots of problems, but which problems are you going to solve? So the smart team is really able to work on those problems gives the, 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 the business the best benefit, okay? So we use a quality analysis tool called Pareto Chart. So Pareto um, was created by an Italian economist mm -hmm. called Wilfredo Pareto, and he recognized that 80% of the country's wealth came from 20% of the people. It's called the 80-20 rule. Wow. So we okay. use that really to mm. identify the biggest problems that will give us the best leverage for the business. That's so we use that, but we also recognize that some small problems can also be um, easy to solve and give you a good gain. So we'll, 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 we'll use a combination of, of, of those two approaches. That's so interesting. Um, 
So you've talked about the tool to identify a problem. What about tools to solve these problems? Yeah, that's a great question. So once you've got your team, you've mm -hmm. got your problems, we go into uh, then using structured problem solving approaches. So we've used Six Sigma. We also use the 8D approach. The 8D uh, comes from the automotive industry. And it really helps us to uh, work through that problem in a methodological way. So you start off by defining your team. You then move into getting in a containment so you can protect your customer from the issue. Mm -hmm. You then move to root cause. So we use uh, tools such as the 5Y and the fishbone diagram to help to try and um, solve the root cause, come up with a corrective action for that root cause, and then implement that and get it sustained and have, have a prevention going in so that you've solved that issue. Oh, interesting. So with your teams and your problems and your structured problem solving process, you now need to find a way of making sure you're tracking it and you're, you've got your goals to achieve and you're making it visible. Be bold, make your goals public. And then the last thing is you need to make sure you're recognizing people and celebrating progress. Thank you so much, Darren. It's been so good to see the factory today. Understanding the approach to continuous improvement has shown me our commitment to quality. Okay. Shall we head off? Yes. Yeah.